In this segment, we're going to embark on the creation flow, where the user can create their own personalized memory game using photos from their phone. The idea is that each memory card, instead of having one of the default icons that we have put into the app, we're going to have each memory card be a photo that the user has picked out. So to start out with, we're going to just add one more menu option here, which will launch the creation flow. So I'm going to go into menu main. Let's check out one more menu item. And the title here will be create custom game. Let's give this an ID of MI custom, which stands for menu item custom. And then show us action will be never. We always want this to be underneath the three dots of the menu. So now that we have that, let's go into main activity. And here is where we can register some action to happen when the user taps on that menu item. So I'll say r.id.mi custom. And then we'll put this into a new function called show creation dialog. Let's define this, create function. And this creation dialog will actually be quite similar to show new size dialog because the very first thing we want before we navigate the user to the creation flow is we need to understand what size of a memory game do they want to create. And so we're going to reuse the exact same dialog board size here and inflate that. And that will be what we show in a dialog before we allow the user to go into the creation flow. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of this. And now we are going to show the alert dialog. So I'm going to copy this now, although we're going to modify this a little bit. So the title of this alert dialog shouldn't be choose new size. It should be create your own memory board. Then the view will be the three different options of memory games. And here we would like to figure out which board size has been picked once they tap on the OK button. And so for that, That'll be a local variable called val desired board size. Board size. And we're not going to set up anything here. We, we want to navigate the user to a new screen or a new activity uh, where they can actually start choosing which photos they like. One thing I'd like to do before going forward is open up the dialog board size and have a default radio button selected. So we're going to choose the easy radio button. And what that means is by default, when the user is creating a new memory board, they're going to be creating an easy board, but they have the option to pick medium or hard if they want. So now our objective is to create a new screen or new activity when the user has tapped on the OK button of this alert dialog. So open up the same directory where main activity is located, right click on it and go to new activity. And we're going to choose empty activity and call this create activity because this will be the screen for creating a new board. And then we'll just tap finish. So the way we navigate between activities or screens in Android is through something called the intent system. So intents are fundamental to Android. They're basically requests to the Android system or to another application to do some certain action. So the intent that we're doing here is an intent to go from the main activity and launch the create activity. So I'll say val intent is equal to intent. And there are two parameters in the intent constructor. The first is a context, which is we're going to pass in this, which is referring to the where we're coming from. And the second parameter is the class that we want to na navigate to. And that will be the create activity dot Java. And now in order to actually navigate to the create activity, we need to call this method start activity. And there are two versions of the start activity method. One is start activity and the other is start activity for result. So start activity for result is necessary if you want to get some data back from the activity that you've launched. So in our case, we're going to be launching the create activity. The user will be creating a brand new board there. And then whenever that's done, we actually want to get that data back in the main activity and allow the user to play that custom game that they just created. And so we do want start activity for result because we want to get that signal back from our child activity about what is a newly created game. So I'll say start activity for result and pass in the intent that we just created. And because we're doing start activity for result, we also need to pass in a second parameter, which is the request code. So I'm going to define that as a constant called create request code. And we're going to have that be defined inside of the companion object 
of main activity. So say private const val, create request code, and I'll set this equal to 248. It doesn't actually matter what this is as long as it's some unique integer within your activity. 248 is near and dear to my heart because that's the area code of where I grew up in Michigan. Let's test this out by running the app. And what we expect is when I tap on the menu option to create a new board and I confirm the alert dialog by picking a size, then I should be navigated to a new screen, uh, which should be empty. That should be the create activity. And we can see that it's an empty activity. And our goal now is to actually fill out the UI to allow the user to create this custom board. One piece of information that we need in order to properly show the create flow is what size board does the user want to create? What size game did they choose? And that's actually the data that we collected via the radio buttons, but we're not doing anything with that data. And so Android has a system with intents to pass additional data along with the request to do an action. So here we're making the request to start the create activity Inside of that intent, we're going to put in an extra, and that will be the desired board size. So the extra has a key and value. The key is always a string, and the value is the, the variable that we want to pass between these activities. So the key I'm going to define as a constant extra board size, and the value is going to be desired board size. So we have to define extra board size. I'm, I'm going to put this inside of the constants.kt file that we have from earlier. And this has to be a string. So I'm just going to have the string value be extra board size. Let's import this. And the reason I'm defining extra board size into a separate file as opposed to within main activity itself is because we're actually going to be referencing extra board size and create activity. And so for anything which is shared, a shared constant between multiple files, I'm going to put that into constants.kt rather than defining it into a single file. So now that we've added this, let's go into create activity and let's pull that data out from the intent. So the way this works is we will get the intent and get the serializable extra, extra board size. And we're going to cast this as board size, right? And we're going to save that into a variable called board size. And actually, I want this to be a member variable, so we can reference it reference it across multiple methods. Say private late init var board size. And now we don't need to declare it in the onCreate function. One more thing I want to do is, based on the board size, I want to modify the title of the create activity to indicate how many pictures does the user have to select from their phone in order to make a valid game. So the number of pictures the user has to select will be half of the number of cards in that game of memory. So for example, if I have a hard game that I picked, which is 24 cards, I need to pick 12 unique images from my phone. And so that's what I want to communicate in the title of this action bar. So in order to change the text, we can say support action bar dot title. And then this is going to complain because support action bar technically is nullable. And so we can use a question mark operator, which says only call this attribute if support action bar is not null. And if that's the case, then we want to set this equal to some string. And we're going to set this equal to choose picks 0 out of 12, for example. So if we pick the hardboard, it would be 12 here. If you pick medium, it would be 9, and so on. Of course, we can't hard code in 12 here. So I'm going to define another variable, which is num images required. So this will be a private bar num images required. And initially, this is going to be negative 1. But as soon as we get the intent extra, now we can set this equal to board size dot get num pairs. And so now instead of hard coding in 12 here, I'm going to pass in num images required. And one more thing I want to do before we test this out is on the support action bar, there's an ability to Instead of having the default appearance, we can have a back button, which allows the user to easily exit out of this flow and go back to the main activity if they want. The way we can do this is say support action bar dot set display home as up enabled and pass in true here. That'll modify the action bar to show a back button. And then we need to actually take some action when the user has tapped on that back button. And this is similar to what we have done before. So we're going to override this method on options item selected. I'll say if the item ID is equal to android.r.id.home, 
then we'll just say finish, which means I want to finish this activity and go back to the main activity. Return true here. And the reason this is android.r.id.home is because this ID is defined within the Android system, the Android SDK. This is not a menu item that we added, so that's why it has an Android prefix here. Let's try it. So go into the creation flow. Let's pick easy. And so now you can see that we have um, the back button and it says choose picks zero or four, which makes sense because there are going to be eight images in the easy version of the game. So that means we have to pick four different pictures. If I tap on back, then we go back to the main activity. The last thing I want to do in this segment is do some quick adjustments into the UI in the activity create.xml. So right now it's just a blank screen. Let's give us give ourselves a bit more space. I'm going to minimize this and also let's delete some of the extra files that we don't care about right now. So by default, we have this constraint layout, which is the root element, and that's fine. What I want to do is I want to drag out a button, and this will be anchored to the bottom of the screen. And this is going to be how the user can save their newly created game. So I'm going to constrain it to the bottom and also to the right and left. And I want this to take up the whole screen width because it's a primary action. This is what the user really is intending to do when they come to this screen. Width will be match constraint, so it takes up the whole width. And then I'm going to have a 16 dp margin on the left and right. Let me zoom in and show you a little bit closer. And then also on the bottom, let's add an 8 dp margin from the bottom of the screen. Let's change the, the ID to be btn safe. And then let's also give this text of safe. One thing that we'll want to do is by default, the user shouldn't be allowed to tap on this button because they haven't actually provided the correct data in order to create this game, right? Like it doesn't make sense to save the game without having chosen some images, which we'll do in the later on. And so to start out with, um, search for this attribute called enabled, and then we're going to set this to be false. So that grays out that button. That looks good. And then one more widget I want to drag out is an edit text. And this edit text represents the name of this custom game that the user is creating. So I want this to also be full width. So drag this to the left and right and have it also be 16 dp on the left and right side of the screen. And then I want it to be constrained to the top of the save button. Let's give it a margin of 8 dp from the bottom and the width can be match constraint, so it takes out the whole screen width. Let's change the input type to just be text. We don't want this to be a person name, we just want it to be regular text. And by default, there should be no text here, that's for the user to fill out. But we do want to give the user a hint of what should be, what, what they should write in this edit text. So in the hint attribute, I'm going to write game name example. And, uh, fun. and just a few more things before we wrap up. First off, I would like to set an attribute called digits on this edit text. So search for digits. And what digits represents is what is the valid allowable input in this edit text. This game name that the user writes is going to be living in our database that we'll get to later. And so we want to be, we want to constrain what the user is allowed to actually put in here you can kind of copy what I did. I'm allowing the user to enter in any of the digits, one through zero through nine, or A, B, C, D, all the lowercase letters, or underscore or dash, that's it. So there's no slashes allowed, no question mark, no period, things like that. And the reason for this is because I want it to be easy for people to be able to share the game name. So for example, panda underscore fun is a valid game name, and that's also easy for me to communicate out to someone else. As soon as we start introducing uppercase, lowercase letters, or slashes, or things like that, that will make it harder to communicate the game name to other people. And also, it actually might cause some issues in our database. So it's better to constrain the user input here. A couple other things. I played around with this a little bit. I want to set the IME options to be done, action done. And what that'll do is it'll change the keyboard to have a check mark at the bottom right to indicate to the user that they've finished filling out this field. And we can also change the ID here to be ET game name. So it stands for edit text game name. And if we go into the code tab, there's one more change I want to make. 
which is called important for autofill and we want to set this to no. And what this means is that we don't want the Android system to be over eager and autofill this field. And finally, specify the maximum number of lines allowed in this edit text, which will be one. That basically means that there are no line breaks allowed in this edit text, which kind of makes sense. We want the game name to be short, concise, and fit onto a single line. Let's try it. So now when we navigate into the creation activity, then we expect to see this UI at the bottom of the screen. Awesome. So you can see the button is disabled and we have this edit text, which has the hint that we specified. And I can type in A, B, C, D and the letters like that. But if I try typing in a question mark, you, you'll see that it doesn't actually show up. Same thing with capital letters or slash and so on. So that looks like it's working. Awesome. So we have the shell of the UI for our create activity. In the next segment, we're going to start fleshing this out a little bit more by allowing the user some UI where they, which they can tap and select photos from their phone. If you have any questions, I'd love to help. Hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you soon.